the telecast of the 1986 Rugby League Grand Final. The trophy you're looking at, of course, captured a magic moment in Rugby League back in 63, wasn't it? When St George and uh, Norm Proven played Western Suburbs and Arthur Summons. And that, of course, is the Winfield Cup trophy for which Canterbury and Parramatta will compete later this afternoon. The two clubs that have totally dominated the 80s. In 80, it was Canterbury. 81, 82, 83, Parramatta. 84, 85, of course, it was Canterbury Bankstown. And thus, they are the defending premiers. Well, unfortunately for the people coming to the cricket ground today, the weather pattern is in stark contrast to 1985. Very thick, very grey skies, some showers, one falling right now, and the threat, I'm sure, of more to come. The first grand final of the day is underway here. The crowd is already building up. Uh, we're expecting the capacity crowd of around about 50,000 here this afternoon for the big one at 3 o'clock. But the under-23s, it's Penrith against the minor premiers South Sydney who won their way through with an 8-7 victory over Western Suburbs just two weeks ago. There's the South Sydney side, bolstered by the return of Harrington, uh, Moon, and also the big top forward in number 40, Ian Roberts, from first grade. And that really is a strong side. They won the minor premiership by four points. But, of course, today the question mark to be asked or answered whether or not this side the Penrith under 23s can create Sydney rugby league history by going through to win their grand final from fifth spot the Balmain boys tried it from a playoff in fifth spot uh, Wayne but fell foul last week it is a tough assignment well Penrith uh, have done exceptionally well to get this far and uh, it's going to be a tall order today in the conditions because it's uh, pretty heavy out there and in this first half they're running into quite a, st a stiff breeze and uh, I believe they've really got to, got to get first points on the board and get off to a good start so it's South Sydney in possession of the ball at the moment. That's Chisholm taking play up uh, just uh, 10 metres inside uh, Penrith's end of the ground. It's Weeks that goes into dummy half, and South Sydney move it again towards the centre of the ground, and that's Roberts. He's upended, got the pass back to Neville, but he's grounded about 12 metres inside Penrith's end of the ground. The referee for today's game is Barry Barnes going into dummy half as the fullback Brad Webb. He spots the gap and goes to the blind side, exactly 10 metres out from the Penrith line. 15 minutes gone in the under-23 grand final. It goes out through Neville. There's a good pass. There's a try for South Sydney. The man going over is Alan Nelson. And South Sydney hit the lead by four points to nil. Just after 16 minutes of play in the first half of the under-23 grand final for 1986. Just a case of standing in the tackle here. Joe, Joey Thomas gets the ball out. Out to Neville. Neville holds the ball up and over goes Craig Weeks backing up under the post there. Great support play. So what a way for South Sydney to begin. Daryl Neville, the young 5 8 for the South Sydney side, a chance to put his side even further ahead. He's raised the flag, so the score. At the Sydney Cricket Ground, South Sydney lead Penrith by six points to nil. It was the tackle of Darren Curry, the centre three-quarter of Penrith. Now Chisholm works it outside the 22. Webb. That's the man that put uh, South Sydney in the lead. The, prop, the big prop forward, or the second row forward, Joe Thomas, who put them in the lead by four points to nil. The conversion by Darrell Neville sees South Sydney lead by six points to nil as Darren, uh, Warren Gentles tries to run the ball outside the 22. Got it back to his fullback, a bad mistake, picked up by McCarthy. Down loaded to Harrington for the corner. Bumps off the man, and a try to South Sydney, their second of the match, and a very costly error by Penrith. Darren McCarthy swooping on the ball, and from that then it was just shut the gate as he unloaded to his winger, and Harrington went over in the corner. Well, just a fundamental error here. He shouldn't have really passed that ball in that situation. There was no need to take any risks at all. South with Dolly on the spot. There was just too much strength here from Harrington. And uh, he goes over out in the corner. I think full credit to the South uh, chasers there for being up so far up uh, once these players got the ball. Well, as I'm saying, Wayne, that uh, the side that makes the least mistakes usually wins grand finals, and I wonder how much Penrith will rue that mistake. Well, that's for sure. They've got to play safe down inside their own quarter, and uh, I suppose a little bit of inexperience showed there. He's kicked one from one so far. Will that sneak over? No, it's waved away. So South Sydney lead the under-23 grand final by 10 points to nil. 
but uh, it's a big task in front of Penrith just here because 10 points down and the wind has dropped, unfortunately for them. Uh, it's going to be a mighty effort if they can pick themselves up from here. So South Sydney on the attack. It goes out through the halfback uh, burn and finally uh, play up on the 22 metre line. There's the drop goal attempt. Is it successful? It has put South Sydney in the lead by 11 points to nil. They're taken up by Judd, just outside the 22. And at the end of this match, of course, the man of the match award as Roberts makes the big break up field. A beautiful pass to Byrne. He's got the fullback. Robertson to beat the chip forward. He's been brought down. What will the referee Barnes do? Will he rule the late tackle? He does. And a penalty right under the post for South Sydney. Well, really, it, uh, the fullback Robinson was in no man's land there, Wayne. The, the chip over the top by the halfback Burn. Well, he will play the penalty, I'm sure. Referee Barry Barnes had no option there but to penalise uh, Penrith, and that, that was a costly error because uh, the Penrith wingers were certainly coming across, and Calvin would have certainly got to the ball first of all. So Neville with the ball placed. Five minutes gone, second half. A chance for South Sydney to go further ahead. Waved away, so South Sydney cling to that 11 points to nil lead in the under-23 grand final of 86. The man coming into effect the tackle was the centre three-quarter David Moon. Kick over the top, the ball will run dead in goal, or will it? It's come back in as Harrington comes back. But Penrith, for about the first time in this match, really putting pressure on the South Sydney line. That's really their first opportunity, David, and uh, I really think those two players were a little offside there had they got to the ball. Well, Wayne Pearce predicted earlier after the first field goal attempt by Ray Byrne that that was the start of one many to come, and certainly just a few moments ago, South Sydney took a firmer grip on this under-23 grand final with yet another drop goal. Thompson, Blair. It's Big Carroll, replacement player on the Penrith side. Delaney at halfback is slotted into dummy half. There's Fitzhenry with the grubber kick for the corner. Ball rolling end on end. That's a great kick by Penrith. And that's put them into an attacking position, really, right for probably the second or third time in this grand final. It certainly has, David. And um, unfortunately for South Sydney, Ian Roberts has just left the field. He looks a little tired, but uh, he's been replaced by Darren Maroon. Just a reminder that uh, I'll be joined by Billy J. Smith and Billy Anderson for the reserve grade grand, uh, grand final between Eastern Suburbs and Parramatta. The big one coming up in about 10 minutes or so from here. It's just on four minutes remaining in the under-23 grand final. South Sydney leading by 12 points to nil. There's a kick through. Ball going into touch about a metre short of the uh, Penrith line. That's Gentles with the ball. Fitzhenry to Vitanza. Gaia. Good pass away for Delaney, the halfback. He's worked very hard, the pass on the far side for Rod McNeil, but he's claimed well and truly inside the uh, South Sydney end of the ground. And play will restart with the scrum. Marone with the pass. Neville, short of the quarter line. Steve O'Day, a dummy half. Just under a minute and a half remaining as it comes back to burn again with another drop goal attempt. Will that sneak over? It looks good from here. 13 points to nil. South Sydney lead the grand final in under 23s. And the third drop goal of the second half by their halfback burn. Yep, there's the hooter about the sound. It is all over. It is victory for South Sydney to start this grand final day off for 1986. A tremendous performance by the South Sydney side. They lead by 10 points to nil at half time. Three drop goals by their halfback Ray Byrne in the second half. Sees them take out the premiership. There's Darren McCarthy, the son of Big Bob, who we spoke to earlier in the telecast. So a jubilant moment for South Sydney. Uh, on behalf of the South Sydney Rugby League Club, the under-23s, all 30 of them, um, we did it for ourselves, no one else. We'd like to thank the supporters for all year. They've stuck by us. Thank you for such a great game in the grand final. Thank you.
Yes, uh, good afternoon, both Bill and David. This will be a tremendous game. We've got probably the two form teams of the reserve grade premiership this year. Parramatta, who finished minor premiers, and Eastern Suburbs that performed consistently right through 1986. And there is a smattering of first graders through both sides, and uh, I'm sure we'll be some treat treated to some ever very, ent very entertaining football. There's the aim, and the rooster has gone loose at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Will they go loose over the next 70 minutes of play? You can feel the crowd building as the kickoff. There it goes. Parramatta defending the Randwick end of the ground at a very solid bit of defence by Eastern Suburbs in the opening minutes of the ground as they wrap up Glen Mansfield. Eden. Jackson taken in the tackle. Inside his own 22. Vince Carr slots in a dummy half. Taken upfield by Steve Sharp. Eden out to Jackson to Ford and that's a great tackle by Eastern Suburbs affected that time by uh, John Tobin Jackson from dummy half nowhere to go finds two or three meters before he's put to ground Carr brushes Ford out of the dummy half situation Eden with the kick a long spiraling punt down to Portlock at fullback for Eastern Suburbs he takes play up towards the halfway line before he's met by the Parramatta defense in the form of Tony Casado so they swing it back again, Eastern Sub. Oh, there's one rolling loose, but they retain. Still going. Nice bit of work. Yeah. Coming up towards the halfway. Ball going to lose it towards the quarter line. They've lost the ball. Rolls on the ground, and Parramatta come away with it. Car slots in a dummy half. Hard loads it to Eden. Eden with the long torpedo kick downfield. Portlock coming across. The ball will beat the retreating Keir and will find touch. <laughs> a great kick by Mike Eden. Coming up as dummy half, waiting for it now is Mike Eden. He's been kicking quite a bit. That's Stan Jurd. Parramatta like to settle it a little before they'll drive it down there. And Portlock, the fullback for East, have had quite a deal of work here. Here's a little kick through there by Jackson. Out after it recovers too. Got the pass, which oh, was almost picked up by Krinkovic, but sailed into touch. And so the scrum will come back uh, about five metres inside East Territory. Sharp. Here's the kick coming in. That's Cassato. Bennett going back. Portlock moving across. Bennett will take it. Quickly going to be grabbed over there, though. It's Chalmers very smartly on top of him. He'll get up to play it. Away from dummy half. It's uh, Eastern Suburbs bringing it up to about 10 metres short of the halfway. The man up there was Melrose. So now they're still going. Truella sending it back inside. Nice bit of work here. Coming through there is Portlock. Portlock up over the quarter line. He sent his for the corner. Sends it back in. Oh, it's going to be missed. Trying to get a ray over there for it was John Tobin, but he lost it. The try went begging there for Eastern Suburbs. It was merely a matter of Tobin taking the ball. You'll see here after the break being made. Portlock looked inside. Tobin was unmarked. The ball came to him. He just took his eye off it at the last moment and four points down the drain. Out to Eden. There's kick number 10. Over the head of Portlock this time. That forces him to retreat back towards his own in goal. It won't go dead in goal. Jackson's put the pressure on, but Portlock comes out and a good tackle by Jackson. Drives him to the ground, just two or three metres out, but I think Jackson's hurt himself in the tackle. Melrose, met by Mansfield. there is John Thomas the hooker Dave Brown Brown setting it up in the centre there they're only they're right in just about uh, to the left hand side of the goal post only about 10 metres out swinging it back the kick is going to be away yes waved away a shot at, uh, a shot at uh, field goal there by Portlock is waved away so we'll see Parramatta about to set it up so no score no change to the score at the moment he's leading Parramatta by six points to two crowd really building up now for the first grade grand final this afternoon which you'll have on channel 10 uninterrupted so still we have the injured player Spina down there receiving attention East leading by six points to two that's Dave Truella Truella still going up over the quarter way a bustling run there from Truella he'll get up to play it Winding up a dummy half again is Thomas. Thomas will swing it back. Here's the shot at gold again. Having a go up there this time is Melrose. And Melrose is successful. Tony Melrose putting over a drop goal. 
So that gives Inselit now up seven points to two. That's a great, uh, great effort by Melrose. He kicked this one into the breeze. It wasn't all that far out, and he was under, under a great deal of pressure. But the Eastern Suburbs coach, Jim Morgan, has got to be more than happy with this first half performance. Now Eden slots into dummy half, goes to the blind side through Jurd. Look for the support of Atkins on the outside, but couldn't get the pass away. Atkins, who struggled early in this first half with a leg injury, to Eden, to Casado. Now Jackson, space, we've got Krenchevich in the line. He's up over halfway, step back inside the defence. Good play by Parramatta, but the pass has gone astray. Mansfield picks it up, but the referee has allowed play to go on. So pressure in the final seconds of this first half. Tremendous play that time by the, the fullback Prentovitz. As the halftime hooter sounds, the pass went astray. Half time of the Sydney Career Ground in the 986 Reserve Grade Grand Final, and Eastern Suburbs doing it well. They're leading Parramatta by seven points to two. And talking about that first half, we just have some tape here of the Roosters' man of the match, you might like to call him here in the first half. He, he's managed to elude all his uh, so called captors. At, uh, right at the end there, though, I just wonder if it's an omen. The man that did pounce on the rooster and catch him there was a the man wearing the Canterbury colours. It might be the omen for a little bit later on. He was just throwing side steps left, right and centre and uh, really putting in a big performance in the first half. Looking for Leggett to link up there. Leggett, in fact, is the man that goes into dummy half. Running from dummy half. Ten metres short of the Parramatta line. Eastern Suburbs on the attack and leading by 7-2. to two. Trewella goes on his own. Will they be setting it up for the drop goal for Melrose? He's in ideal position. Thomas back for Melrose. Forced onto the left foot, there's the dropped attempt. And the referee signals it so predictably. Eastern Suburbs with the drop goal early in the, f the second half going to an eight points to two lead. Tony Melrose landing his second and it came in this fashion. Well, here's the luxury of having a player that can kick both feet. Melrose was shut out on the right foot, so he ducked back to his left hand side, cleared the defence and popped it over with that, uh, with that left foot of his. Been almost up onto the Parramatta quarter line. He'll get up to play it. Thomas, dummy half again, going uh, on his own this time. Finds a bit of a gap, sneaks through, eventually put down after gaining about five metres. He'll get up to play it with the dummy half as Tobin again. Tobin swings it back to Dave Brown. Dave Brown standing up in the tackle, but eventually they'll put him down. He'll get up to play it, and the dummy half waiting up there is Portlock. The fullback has swung through. Here's Melrose again. Another drop shot at goal has come off a Parramatta player, but Parramatta in possession in the in goal area. And um, referee Kevin Roberts coming back there for the drop out underneath the goal bar. So they're certainly keeping the pressure on Eastern Suburbs. Here it is. You can see it just falls short. Well, had Melrose been able to kick that field goal, it, would have, it wouldn't have put the game out of reach, but it would have made Parramatta's job uh, a very, very difficult one. It would have been that seven-point cushion. They'd have then been looking at having to score a converted try and then score again. So uh, no doubt the tact will be on again if Eastern Suburbs get the opportunity. Melrose, Melrose will be looking to just keep the scoreboard ticking over with one-pointers. Good run there by Mike McLean, the lock forward. And so now we see um, coming his way through there is uh, Bennett. Bennett trying to get up there, but he's only about seven or eight metres out now. Big chance here now for Eastern Suburbs. He's only a couple of metres out from that line, putting on the pressure. Kevin Roberts in there, getting, telling him to get up and play the ball. And the man getting up to do that right now is Hardy. Uh, Truella sending it back. There's Melrose and another drop shot at goal. How's this one? Yes, it's there. So that's another one. Another one on the board to Tony Melrose. And there's no doubt about their tactics in this second half. Eastern Suburbs leading Parramatta by nine points to two. Well, we learn in football that it's never over until the final whistle goes. And I can remember in last year's reserve grade semi-final, I think it was that game, Canberra playing St George. Canberra looked home and hose, and then in the last few seconds of the game, St George got up and won it. Now, Parramatta, they're not taking this lying down. They're moving the ball around. If they can come up with a try here in the next couple of minutes, you'll find that five minutes in a football game, and there's still seven minutes to go in this match, but five minutes in a football game is a long time. So sharp on the blind side. There's the ball put up over the top, a race for the ball. Bennett goes back for Eastern Suburbs. But the ball eludes everybody, comes back into the field of play and in fact goes into touch. Certainly the pressure. You can see here, this football, it takes a bounce like only a football can. It's a, it's a leg break, it moves very quickly and goes out over the sideline. Second remaining. Play on, says the referee. Parramatta in possession. These can break out the champagne. <laughs> I think they can take it out, all right. Matter of fact, I think at the half-time break, they should have been feeling pretty confident, Bill. They had a good lead then, didn't they? Seven points to two. So here's Parramatta with a final burst to try and uh, save some sort of grace, but it's uh, 
going to come dead as Mike McLean comes in and puts him down and it's all over. Now the reserve grade grand final champions are Eastern Suburbs, first time since 1949. They've defeated Parramatta by 10 points to two. And so, as tradition has it, the presentation of the trophy is from the Rothmans medal winner, Mal Cochran. Congratulations to Eastern Suburbs on a, a great performance today. Well deserved. Man of a few words, it's Mal Cochran, but Dave Brown on his final appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Eastern Suburbs, Suburbs skipper of reserve grade. Receives the trophy Brown. for the reserve grade premiership of 1986 with a 10 Thank points to two victory. Thanks to our over there on the hill. The thank you to, to coaches Jimmy Morgan, Tony Chidiak. Must have been cold there Ladies and gentlemen, John Farnham, the heroes of Australia and our footballers of the future, the New South Wales Rugby League Junior Representatives.